Hey, this is Nate. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today we will work on the RSI grid program again. And in the previous um, video, which you should watch if you haven't watched it yet, <laughs> I wrote the program that um, creates or opens a trade whenever the RSI is above or below 70, but these trades are never really close. So in this video, I will add the <clears throat> code that will close these positions if there is a profit of x yeah we can say points i think maybe we can make it a tp points so we could say something like input int uh, we could create a variable for this and let's say if there are 200 points in profit like for all of the trades that are currently open we want to close these trades and we can do this um, in the on-tick function of course and what we have to do is we have to count the profit of all the profitable buy uh, or of all the trades um, on the buy side and the sell side and observe if they are um, or if the sum of these profit points is above the input for the tp points so as you can see here for example we have uh, one, two, three, four buy positions. So we would have to add all the profit points of these positions and check if they are above the input, the value in the input variable. So what we do here is we first of all have to loop through all the open positions. And the easiest way to do so is to use a standard loop here, the for loop that um, I showed several times on in other YouTube tutorials. So we will just loop through all the open positions. Then we will use the um, position index to get the position ticket using the position get ticket function, where we just choose the i variable here as a index parameter. And then we will get the position ticket of all the open positions. As a next step, I will try to position uh, to select the position using this position ticket. And if this works, we will then check if it is a buy or a sell position. So, um, we could, yeah, let's just create two variables here. Um, points buy and points sell. Oh, it could be an integer variable like this. And now we will just check if position get, oh wait, let's get the position type here first, position, uh, type or enum position type enum position type this is the position type variable and then we will use the position get integer function to get the position type of the currently selected position and if we compile this there will be a warning actually there are multiple warnings um, yeah, but this is the warning that I was talking about, Im implicit enum conversion. So the position get integer function, it returns a long value by default. But if we have a look at the enumerations here, uh, enumeration identifiers, we can see the position type um, identifier, it will return a enum position type value, as you can see here as a type. So what we can do here is we can type cast this and say this is a enum position type value and then the warning is gone. So now we can check if position type is equal to position type by and if it's not a by position then we can check if the position type is equal to position type cell. I mean, it, it has to be a position type cell in this case because there are only these two position types in MetaTrader 5 programming, I think. But yeah, this is a way to like get the position type and store it in a variable. So what we want to do here is if we get the, uh, if we can select a position, and if we are able to figure out if it's a buy or sell position, then we also need the, um, the current bid and ask price. So we will go symbol info double to get the bid price, symbol bid. And we will use the symbol info double function again to get the ask price. And also we want the position open price. So let's go here, position open price. And we can get the position open price using the position get double function. 
position price open is the identifier for this. So now for a buy position, we will use the points buy and add the current bid price minus the position open price um, divided by the point value to get the points. Also, we will have to put this into brackets because otherwise this calculation is done first, which will give us a wrong result. Also for the sell positions, we will just add the position open price minus the ask price and divide this by the point value for the current symbol. So this should add up all the points. And I think there's a problem because this is not initialized. So let's do it like this and initialize the, initialize the points buy and point sale variable with zero. This will delete, uh, erase two of the warnings. And then we have another warning. This is because, yeah, we say this is a integer variable, but then we try to add a potential double value. So what we can do here, the easiest thing is to just type cast it again as a integer value, like all of this, and then we are good. Um, okay, so now since we have these points buy and point sell values, we can now go ahead and maybe um, also write it in the chart comment. So let's move the chart comment down here and Let's say we also want to print the points by, points by, and then we can just say points by, and we want to print the points sell. So we always have a good overview um, over all the open positions and the profit or loss that we currently have. So there's one problem. If I compile this, this RSI, variable is no longer or array whatever is no longer um, known here and the problem is before i moved the comment here it was inside of the body of this if statement and the thing is this double variable double rsi uh, variable this one is declared so it is created for the first time inside of the body of this if statement which means that it only lives, like this variable, it only lives inside of this if statement's body for now. This is a matter of scope. So if you have any programming language, pretty much there's this um, concept of scope. So if you create a variable in a smaller scope, like in the body of this if statement, it's not available in the next bigger scope. So the bigger scope would, the, would be the body of this on tick function. And um, this means that in order to make this RSI variable available here, we will have to move it to the next um, bigger scope. So we could move it up here in the on tick function, which means that it's now available here in the on tick function and also in the body of this um, if statement, of course, because this is the smaller scope. So um, yeah, also we cannot really move it here because in this case it is created again every single tick, which means that every single tick, this double array will be created again. And when the double value is created again, it will not hold the values of the previous tick. So what we can do is we can erase it here and move it up here, maybe here, to make it a global variable. And the global sco uh, scope is um, the bigger scope, the, the biggest uh, possible scope uh, that we have in the in the program in the emitted data five program I think so everything that we create here like every variable that we create on a global scope is created when the program is started for the first time and the variable will stay live for the whole runtime of the program so the values in this RSI array are not deleted if the on tick function terminates or is finished but instead um, the values will stay inside of the RSI array for as long as the program is running and then the values are just exchanged here if this copy buffer is function is uh, called again so okay so if we have the program like this now we, we added this uh, piece of code here where we check how many points um, the, the, the buy and sell positions are in profit. Um, and we can give it a go in the strategy test set to see if this is actually working. 
So let's wait until the first positions are here. So we have a buy position and we can see it is currently or it should be 25 points in profit. This will be hard to check, but yeah, let's just do it like this. I mean, yeah, this um, 22 points. I mean, we can do the math, like get the, let's just get the open price and do the calculation. Uh, but I think it should be uh, somewhat correct uh, because the calculation is done and um, Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There are two points missing, I think, which is a little bit weird. <clears throat> but, yeah, now it's okay. Yeah, I think maybe there are some rounding issues, but it's, it's not really a problem here. So we can see, like, in general, this should work. And if we see another position now, um, we should see that the uh, profits of the profit points of these positions add up. Like for example, here we have two positions now, both are negative, so we have minus 500 points and we just have to wait until all of the positions in total like get positive and then we would close these positions and this is the code that we would have to add now. So the counting seems to be correct, so let's go ahead and now check if <clears throat> points buy is greater than um um oh, tp points from the inputs uh, or from the from from this input variable here and if this is true then we want to close by positions and if points sell uh, are greater than tp points then we close sell positions here close sell. So we will have to add the code for this and the easiest way to close all buy or sell positions of the program is um, yeah, to just use this loop again. Or we can actually copy the first four lines of the loop. Just copy it. Um, oh, we will make it a little bit different like this. And then go like this and don't forget to add the closing brackets here and this is why I always like use the tabulator on my keyboard to move code a little bit to the right if it's a new like it's if, if it's a smaller scope so we can see like this is the opening bracket for the for loop this is the closing bracket this is the opening bracket for the if statement this is the closing bracket and this is opening for this if statement this is closing for this if statement opening closing so you can see like if you move it a little bit to the right and align it correctly it's really easy to read the code and to understand where the brackets are opened and where they are closed so here we loop all the trades a second time and then we just check if the points by are above the tp points and then we check if i mean if this is true we'll check if the position type is equal to position type by and in this case, we will close the position using the uh, trade object variable uh, or trade object. And we just say position close and provide the position ticket here as a parameter. So the program knows what position has to be closed. And here we check, of course, if it is a cell position. So this should be enough code to make sure that all the positions are closed once the TP points for like the buy or sell side are uh, uh, reached. And this might not be like the perfect best possible solution um, to, to implement this code because I mean, we, we loop through all the positions two times uh, with every um, execution of the on tick function. But yeah, for now it's a just a easy way to realize this uh, strategy. So I will just keep it as it is. I mean, there are better ways, but for this easy tutorial, this is totally fine, I think. So you can see this uh, should be 200 points in profit. Yeah, it's it's about, wait, let me, let me try to get this right. So from here to here, it should be around, yeah, it's around 200 points. So the position is closed already. So let's wait until we see some more buy trades. This one was again 200 points in profit, so another quick profit. This one should be a losing trade, yeah. So we will see the next trade and if both trades are 200 points in profit, 
both trades will be closed. Here we, we will see a lot of sell trades. You can see currently there are 2,000 points negative, but as soon as the... Um, the price turns around, we will see that these positions are closed. And I mean, this is a grid system. So it's not con it's not a low risk system. This is a high risk system. And it could take really it could take a while for you to close these positions. And if you are really unlucky, it might take several years. So this is the bet that you take if you trade a system like this. But at some point, like uh, positions should be closed, I think, but it's just a matter of time and a matter of how much margin you have to um, to keep the keep the strategy or the the expert advisor alive. So here you can see it can really take quite a while, but as as um, the market um, increases in value, we will see more and more sell positions. So we will like the average price of all of these sell positions will increase. So we will just need a um, a quick drop in the price so all of the positions will be in profit and can then be closed but right now you can see in the upper left corner the positions are still negative and like right now there are 8,000 points negative 9,000, 10,000 now but still if the price comes back we will close all the trades in profit and this is for most grid strategies like the general idea um, and the general um concept of such a strategy so let me speed this up a bit let me minimize this and yeah still not closed and there the positions are closed and we should see if we have a look at the graph here we, we will have a drawdown that's, that is kind of big but at some point all the trades will be closed and profits so the equity is below the balance curve for a while but then Everything is everything is aligned again at some point. And again, this is a high risk system. But um, every I know a lot of you guys are interested in these kinds of strategies. These are also a lot of um, uh, a lot of strategies on the MQL5 web page or in the MQL5 market. Uh, they use strategy concepts like this because most of the time you will make profits, and um, this is why these strategies are so commonly used. And yeah, you can see this, I mean, the concept works, the expert advisor works, and this is like the easiest way to realize such, such a strategy, I think. So you can see there is not a lot of, uh, not a lot of lines of code, and um, we just use like these two loops here to monitor the TP or the points that the buy and sell side are in profit, and then we realize the TP here in the second loop. So yeah, this is it uh, for now. I think maybe we can make a another um, quick backtest here. Let's go to overview, single backtest. So this is not the visual mode, no. So we will see a little bit more action and I want to increase the lot size a bit. And now maybe test the last three years because I just want to show you how this might look if you run such a program for multiple years and show you the, the pros and cons of such a strategy. So you can see like most of the time you actually make profit, but at some point you will see bigger drawdowns. Like for example, here we had two long drawdowns already. Now there's another really, really big drawdown. I mean, right now I'm testing with a 100K account, but most people don't have 100K to trade with. But yeah, you can see where this is going. Like, the strategy concept is really clear, I think. And this is, again, what a lot of uh, the programmers on MQL5 in the MQL5 market try to sell you. And you can see it's super easy to write such a strategy. I mean, an, an advanced programmer needs like 10 minutes to create a strategy like this. And this is something that would sell really good on MQL5. But, I mean, I don't want to sell strategies like this because it's a high-risk program. Some would say it's a scam. Um, I mean, if you are honest with what the strategy does, I don't think you could say it's a scam, but it's a high-risk program and a lot of people just don't understand how it works. So I'm just trying to, to, to educate you and show you how these strategies work so you don't fall for some um, trading gurus who just sell like easy and cheap stuff like this. 
So yeah, you can see this can really work out, but at some point it will it, it will most likely crash your account if you go in with too much risk and that's that's always the the risk that you accept except if you trade a strategy like this. So just be safe out there. Don't um don't uh trade with too much risk. Always trade with money that you can afford to lose. And yeah, feel free to use this strategy. Um, use it for your trading, uh, adjust the strategy if you like. And if you want to learn how to become a MQL5 programmer, MetaTrader 5 programmer, and if you want to really understand all the concepts of variables, data structures, and everything, check out the link in the video description. The MetaTrader 5 masterclass is still on discount if you see this video. And um, yeah, it's the best way to learn programming for MetaTrader 5 in my, in my opinion. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you were able to follow along and I hope that you um, that you had fun programming this little strategy. Have a good time testing it. And yeah, in the end, I just uh, all, I, all I can say is have a good time and good trades and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.